So Ben, Aaron, and I got back out to Eastrim to do some mountain biking the other day. And after the last video where I showed us mountain biking in Eastrim, there were a lot of comments asking about Aaron's bike and just uh, comments on Aaron mountain biking in general. So I thought we'd actually talk with Aaron about mountain biking and her experience mountain biking. Like, what did you think we had talked about, like getting back out to Eastrim? And this was your second time riding it on your actual mountain bike, right? Yeah, yeah, the second time. I like Eastrim. I, for whatever reason, had been really nervous about riding it before we rode it, and then we ended up riding it for the first time at the end of last year. Um, so didn't get a chance to do it again. I like it more each time we go. Like it's more technical, I think, than Hampton, or at least technical in a different way. And I think that that's one of the things I've really been enjoying about mountain biking, is learning those different kinds of technicalities. You were telling me when we were just chatting I think we're riding back or heading home from Eastrim, something about like how you got into mountain biking, because I guess I didn't even realize it as much as we ride together and hang out. When I explain to people like how I got into mountain biking, because they're like, oh, I would never try that, I tell them that I was tricked into it because I would never have tried it if somebody was like, hey, do you want to go mountain biking? I would have been like, no, thank you, that's not for me. Last spring, Mikey was like, hey, do you want to go to Jake's Rocks? And it was like camping and biking. And I was like, oh yes, I camp, I bike, let's go. Didn't ask any more questions. And it turned out that it was mountain biking. And uh, I had a really great time. And living so close to Hampton, decided to give that a try and really enjoyed that. And that was all on my Bombora initially, so gravel bike, under biking it. And your Bombora running what, like something like two inch 650B tires or something like that? Oh, they were 48s. 48s. 650B 48s. 650B 48s, and that what you were mount that's what you were mountain biking on. And I was mountain biking on my Raleigh Tamland, which has 42 millimeter tires, which I've said for Hampton, I'm totally fine on. It doesn't Hampton Hills mountain bike park, but I don't have a problem with that at all. Whereas Jake's Rocks, I definitely felt like I was underbiked. And I said in the last mountain biking video, that same thing with Eastrim, it's definitely underbiking there. So after I got into it a little bit on the Bombora, we used the uh, Cannondale frame that Otis had lent to me for like a winter bike. We had studded tires on it. This is a 90s CAD 3, something yeah, like that. Something yeah, something like that. And we switched out the tires and did a couple other things to make it more mountain bike trail friendly. And so I started riding that more. And it definitely made a huge difference. I don't remember how wide the tires are on that bike, but it was definitely more responsive and the additional width in the tires helped a lot. And so I was having even more fun on that. Yeah, because we went to ba back to Jake's Rocks and you rode that. Well, I took that bike to Jake's Rocks, but I actually, in continuation of the evolution, spent most of the time riding Otis's brother's electric queen, an all-city mountain bike that they don't make anymore, but it has dropper post and front suspension, modern geometry. Yeah, like a steel hardtail with yeah. pretty modern mountain bike geometry. That was a very different experience. I felt way more capable. Well, I know after you rode that on a bunch of the trails, like on the last day, then you did ride the 90s mountain bike, and I know you felt a, the dramatic difference yeah. between modern mountain bike and vintage mountain bike. Yeah, so coming out of that trip, I was like, yeah, I think I really want a, a modern mountain bike. So that's kind of what spurred me to make a move and get the Timberjack. Yeah, which, so you have, because the Timberjack comes in a bunch of flavors, but basically it's what frame material it is, right? So you have the aluminum Timberjack? Yeah, I think it's the base model of the aluminum Timberjack. They also have a couple, like within each frame material, they have a couple levels based on components. So everything on yours, though, would be the stock build at the base level Timberjack, except that you change to, what, Mescals for the tires? Vittoria, I think. Uh, Vittoria Mescals. I mean, it's still kind of an extravagant purchase for me. I'm kind of financially conservative in that way. I've just really enjoyed the riding, and it, in some ways, is less stressful for me than the riding I'm more familiar with, and in some ways more fulfilling than the riding I'm more familiar with. Yeah, I was thinking about this, and I... I had said in the last video how this year, at the time of making that video, I had 
mountain bike more this year than I already have in any other year in my life, if you count actual mountain bike trails, you know, not just getting off road somewhere or when we used to poach them when I was a kid, like hiking trails. But uh, yeah, so I was, th I was saying the two reasons are that you've gotten into it and now you bought a hardtail since you've been more into it. And then I got the gunner. It's more fun for me to go as well with the wider tire clearance. So we've just been heading there a lot. Like what we've been to Hampton Hills five, six times at least together. And I think you've been there a couple of times when I haven't been. Yeah. And then East River twice. We had a period where it rained a lot. And our trails around here are not open when it rains because they're dirt. So they turn to mud. When I mentioned earlier that like mountain biking wasn't, wouldn't have been attractive for me if I considered it. It's because I'm exceptionally risk averse, mm -hmm. terrified of almost everything, catastrophize almost everything. And the components of mountain biking, like technical skills, don't have that many. Hills, I'm not good at. I'm scared of descending. I'm scared of going fast. I'm not good at cornering. Everything about it is like the opposite of anything that I that I am good at. I feel like that has helped it be really engaging for me because I feel like you can really see a difference in both like as you build a little strength or as you learn a new technique or even just repetition of a certain part of the trail. Like there's a couple like punchy hills that I have just been able to start getting up. And it's, that's not so much strength, but that's like the technique of getting your, using the momentum that you have coming into that hill, changing the way that you're using your body or pedaling or whatever to get yourself up the hill. And it's like in mountain biking, I find that you can have small wins within each ride that are really noticeable, which I think is really helpful for me. Yeah, where if it comes to just going on like a gravel or a road ride, any improvement is just gonna be speed for the most part, which isn't really any of our things, you know, not that yeah. we never go for PRs or it's just not like our ultimate goal it, to do that. So. Yeah, but it's also more manageable. So like if we are, you know, if there is something about weekend ride that we do, you know, sometimes like this past Sunday, we rode 50 miles, right? Like how long is it going to take to like get to that point that was challenging so that I can do it again? Whereas Hampton, East Rim, you can just do it again. Yeah. Or like you can come back the next day and do it again and you're taking, that's like an hour of riding to try again. It's fresh in your head and that's a manageable amount of time. That's another reason I really like it is that it takes a 50 mile ride to poop me out and for my legs to feel the next day. An hour of mountain biking will do that for me and I feel like it's a real workout on top of being a fun bike riding experience. I had mentioned how Eastrim has that jump line and it has like an early bailout point. So you could just do, I think it takes like a minute and a half or even a little bit less than that just to hit the first part with these bank curves and like the jump line. And then you can just take like kind of a gravel route back up. And I was like, that increases your skills so fast that you could just do that. Like, I think we did it three times this time. And I think the last time we were there, I did it like four times. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's to hit something over and over again and then start to like learn it like the curves and everything just makes you better even when you don't know the curves, just being able to let off the brakes a little more each time and everything like that, it really improves your skills. That I do enjoy that as well. And it's funny because I haven't gone for like the loop, like I know a lot of people are like time for the overall loop because we all kind of wait up for each other. And we step out of the way if someone on a full suspension bike is coming faster, but it is still cool to, I, I care more about feeling the improvement than seeing like a faster time on oh, Strava. Yeah. It's more, I could just tell when I could handle my bike better. And I think right before I got the timber jack, I was like, oh, maybe I don't get suspension. I don't know. But I feel like, and I think either way, I would have increased my skills. But I feel like learning to use those extra tools on the bike, like the dropper and the suspension, is like another layer of like skill building and challenge is really intriguing to me. One of the other reasons that I really like mountain biking is because there are so many less decisions. And we're leaving for vacation, so I've been pretty focused on work. But I need to take more breaks during work, and so like an hour at Hampton is manageable, but on top of that, I don't have to decide where I'm gonna ride or how I'm gonna ride there or think about how much traffic is there. Yeah, you know, time of day. Yeah. yeah. You just go to Hampton and you follow the trail. And yeah. that's like, I get really bad like analysis paralysis and decision fatigue. And so it's like 
all, the only decision I have to make is like get in the car and drive to Hampton and then ride your bike. The last reason that really sticks out to me as far as mountain bike riding that I, well, that I experience more with mountain bike riding than I do with regular riding is you really have to pay attention. It puts me in this zone where like, it's like the only time that I am fully paying attention to what I'm doing and not trying to multitask with like everything else. You know, like I'm doing the dishes and I'm like, what am I gonna do next? Or like, how can I fix this spreadsheet or whatever? And when I'm fixing a spreadsheet, I'm like, okay, as soon as I'm done with this, what do, what's next on my list? And with mountain biking, you just have to watch the trail and think about responding to that. You have to be engaged with yeah. what you're doing or you will get hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's very much like in the present moment and critical to be, and it's the only time I can find that. Yeah, it's interesting because like on a longer road or gravel ride or just a bike path ride, I, f I start off still yeah, like really thinking too much definitely. and overthinking everything and then it kind of does become meditative over time. But you're, it's, yeah, it's like, almost like mountain biking is good in a different way to take you out of regular life, you yeah. know, in a different direction. Anyway, so we are going to be heading out in about a week from when we're recording this. And it's the first time we're doing a bike camping trip that is actually going to include single track. So almost the first two and a half days will be single track. So it's going to be really interesting to see how we handle that and how it is with loaded bikes on stuff like that's a little more different and technical. We won't be riding mountain bikes though, so you'll be riding your Bombora, but you've put wider tires on there, so yeah. So it should be able to handle it hopefully well. Yeah, I think so. I've done a few rides with those tires, and they're gr great. We've done gravel a couple times, and definitely noticeable difference. And then on the flip side of that, the, the end of the trip is more on the road. On pavement, I haven't noticed like a significant decrease in comfort or performance that will work out well. And this will be your first tour on... The Gunner. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got some videos coming up on both of those. I'm gonna record a video about the Gunner and the setup on that. And I hope to get into videos on all your guys' setup as well. But we guys will definitely have, you know, be filming on the trip and talking about how everything went. So like and subscribe to see more of this kind of thing. Uh, check out the swag store down below and we will see you in the next one. Bye.